Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll be discussing about fundamentals of waveguides. Here, I'll cover three essential points of waveguides. First one is basics of waveguides. Second one is advantages of waveguides. And third one is types of waveguides. So let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of waveguides. First of all, one should know what is the structure of waveguide. The waveguide is a hollow metallic tube with uniform cross section. If you observe the structure, here we have circular waveguide and here we have rectangular waveguide. If you observe the structure, here we have hollow metallic tube and that is having uniform cross section. You can observe here also we have uniform cross section and it is hollow metallic tube. Right. So waveguide is nothing. It is just a pipe that one can say and it is having uniform cross section. Right. The waveguides are used to transmit EM waves using successive reflection from inner walls of waveguide. Here transmission of signal that happens based on total internal reflection. If you observe side view of waveguide, then here if you transmit EM wave, then that is getting reflected from the walls. You can observe. So EM wave propagation is happening based on total internal reflection. TIR means total internal reflection. So waveguides are hollow metallic tube with uniform cross section and that we use it to transmit EM waves using successive reflection from the inner walls. Right. Now I'll be discussing about advantages of waveguides. If you talk about waveguides, then it is simply hollow metallic tube. So fabrication process that is bit easy with waveguides, it is easy to manufacture. When you talk about waveguides, then that is having immunity with EM wave interference. See here with waveguide, inside waveguide, there will be total internal reflection. From exterior environment, there will be minimum interference over here, right? So EM wave interference with waveguide is very less. You can say it is negligible, right? So waveguide is having higher immunity to EM wave interference, right? The waveguides are durable and reliable with their structure. As I have shown the basic structure that is made up of metal. So it is durable, right? And it is also reliable. Like in cable, you will be observing there is a possibility of bending of cable. Those things are possible with transmission line. But when it comes to waveguide, it is durable. The reason is it is rigid in structure. It is made up of metal, right? So waveguides are durable and reliable with their structure. The waveguides can support different modes of propagation. In future coming videos, I'll explain you how modes are there with waveguide. But one should know the waveguide supports multiple modes of propagation of EM waves. Waveguide supports TE and TM mode. Waveguide does not support TEM mode, but with TE and with TM, there are many modes that is supported by waveguide and those modes are useful to propagate signal from one end to another end, right? So waveguide supports different modes of propagation. The waveguide can handle very high power. See inside waveguide, we have total internal reflection and it supports huge power, right? While with transmission line, it can handle low power signal only. The reason is in transmission line, there is a possibility of dielectric breakdown. In transmission line, we will be having two parallel conductor and in between two parallel conductor, there will be dielectric material. So if you increase the power with transmission line, there can be a possibility of dielectric breakdown that is not happening over here with waveguide. So waveguide can handle very high power, right? See in waveguide, loss of power is also low. Inside waveguide, signal propagation happens based on total internal reflection. So loss of power is also low with waveguide, right? And because of which 
we can use waveguide for long distance communication right see in waveguide attenuation is also low see in waveguide signal propagation happens based on total internal reflection and inside waveguide we will be having free space and with free space we have minimum attenuation of signal while in transmission line in between two parallel conductor we have dielectric material so with dielectric material there is a loss of signal because of attenuation while with waveguide signal propagation happens based on reflection where there will be minimum attenuation with air or you can say with free space so with waveguide there will be lower attenuation right see waveguide has lower losses compared to coaxial cable and that is having lower losses because of the reasons which i have already discussed over here with coaxial cable we have inner conductor and outer conductor and both are separated by dielectric material and that dielectric material is having loss tangent based on that there will be attenuation of signal right so you will be observing with coaxial cable there will be higher losses and waveguide is having lower losses right now i'll be discussing about types of waveguides in general usually we use rectangular waveguide only but in general there are five different types let me show it the first category that is rectangular waveguide if you observe here we have hollow metallic tube and that tube is having shape of rectangle over here you can observe so first category that is rectangular waveguide and this rectangular waveguide that is majorly used with many applications right the second type that is of circular waveguide if you observe here we have hollow metallic tube that is having shape of circle over here so this is circular waveguide this is also widely used with many applications but in majority of applications you will be observing rectangular waveguides are used right the third type that is elliptical waveguide here in elliptical waveguide you will be observing with this circular dimensions here we will be having larger dimensions which is broader one over here and here we have smaller dimensions right so if you have circular waveguide and if you press it then with one side there will be larger dimension and with other side there will be smaller dimensions and that will be forming ellipse right so with elliptical waveguide you can observe the dimensions this is connector of elliptical waveguide and this is how waveguide will be there with elliptical shape right now i'll be discussing about third category that is single ridge waveguide the single ridge waveguide that is a part of rectangular waveguide but with rectangular waveguide one ridge is provided if you observe here we have single ridge waveguide so in that see here ridge is provided so that is how basic structure is there it is similar to rectangular waveguide but here there will be one ridge right now last category that is double ridge waveguide if you want to observe double ridge waveguide then here you can observe see this is one ridge and this is second ridge so there are two ridge means it is double ridge waveguide so that is how in general five categories are there but in majority of applications you will be observing we use rectangular waveguides and even in your laboratory with microwave taste bench you will be observing we are using rectangular waveguide only i hope you have understood how many types are there what is waveguide how it propagates signal inside and how many advantages are there based on that you will be getting some motivation to work behind it till if anything you would like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video